hey crew and Nikki, it's been a while since I put up a video. Uh, so we went to LA to watch the MLS Cup championship match, LA against uh, the New England Revolution. You guys know a lot of the background. I'm going to talk a lot about soccer in this video, Nikki, so I'm going to try to get the non-soccer stuff out of the way early so you can watch the non-soccer stuff and then skip the rest of the video if you want. So LA managed to make it to the MLS Cup final, which was pretty awesome. Uh, it was a Sunday night, uh, like I said, a week and a half ago. And I stayed up late reading up on it and I kind of came to bed at one o'clock and, and I said to Sarah, you know, I'd really kind of like to go to this match. And she said, uh, you should go. Um, so I got back up and I bought a ticket and did some stuff, it took me like 45 minutes. Um, then I went back to bed. When I got, came to bed, Sarah said, it would be a lot more fun if I came with you. And I said, yeah, it would. And she was like, okay, we'll go, I'll go. So the next morning I got up and I bought another ticket and we just bought our plane ticket and set up, you know, got hotel reservations and just decided to go. And the cool thing is that since uh, Sarah's uh, cover artist, Christine, and her husband, Don, live in, uh, LA we were able to visit them and also I was able to get a hold of Scott Halleck and meet up with his family in, uh, in Santa Monica uh, Had a nice conversation with Scott and Nicole and his two daughters who are uh, 10 and 13 and uh, and they're uh, Tess and Allie and they're doing great you know it's fun to see him fun to talk to him um, then we uh, after spending like three hours with them, we went to meet up with Sarah's cover artist and we went, visited their house. They came and visited us this last summer. Um, so uh, Christine and Don, and Don's a really cool guy. He actually works as an editor at a vegetarian magazine in LA. Um, and uh, Christine is a writer like Sarah. And, uh, and so uh, we ended up going out to dinner with them and their two kids. They've got a like a two-year-old and a 10-year-old. Um, and so it was really fun. And then we went back to their house and we ended up staying there till 10 o'clock because Sarah and Christine spent about two and a half hours working on a cover for one of Sarah's books. Um, so I ended up watching a football game with Don and, uh, and Alex, their son. So that was fun. Um, then the next morning we got up and we were supposed to meet up with some Galaxy fans for breakfast at nine, and we ended up uh, we ended up not. Uh, only one person showed up in the restaurant we went to. Didn't o they were supposed to open at nine and we got there at nine and they were kind of not ready and they really weren't ready to serve food until ten. And a whole bunch of people there and wanted to eat, so we ended up sitting down and we met one guy who was real nice, um, who I know from online. And then we walked over to the stadium with him and met up with um, some other folks. And I've got pictures, I'm sure, plastered in here. But uh, yeah, it was really fun. So I'm going to talk a little bit more in detail about the Galaxy. Anyway, the, the game went well. LA won 2-1 to one in extra time. It was not a particularly well-played game, but it was really fun to be there and fun to watch. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Landon Donovan. Um, and what's happened to him this year and the Galaxy and why I'm so excited that they won and, and then I'll wrap this up. Um, so uh, Landon, th this obviously was Donovan's last season um, so it was really interesting the way the season started out because going into the season we're thinking he'd be at the World Cup and he had just tied the all-time record for goals scored um, in MLS and uh, last season and so we were thinking he'd break that record this year um, and what happened beginning of the season he came in he was a little bit injured had some tendonitis in his knees um, there was some disagreement with Klinsman clearly who's the men's national team coach and he didn't start out great you know he did okay he had a couple assists early season and he was they were, LA was changed changed their their tactics and they had him playing in a different role than he would played for them previously so it was kind of a rough start of the season for LA and uh, he started rounding into form and then they had the camp and obviously you know that, that Klinsman cut him um, from the team. Um, and he immediately came back in his first game back at LA after the cuts, even before the friendlies that the US played to go to the World Cup, he scored two goals and had an assist, breaking the all-time goals record. Um, 
and so it was you know a big thing for him and then he, he kind of cooled off a little bit um, through the World Cup I mean he played he, he played well but he wasn't like on fire and then uh, there was the MLS All-Star game and he went to the MLS All-Star game and he came in as a second half sub and they were playing the interesting thing this is after the World Cup they were playing um, uh, Bayern Munich which was the team from Germany that Donovan actually went on loan and played for when Jurgen Klinsmann was the coach there. Um, and they also are stacked with a bunch of players who were on the World Cup winning team from Germany. So there's all kinds of storylines there. And so Donovan comes in in the second half and it's tied one to one and somebody sends a long ball over the top and Donovan runs onto it, chests it down, muscles through two defenders and scores the game winning goal. Um, beating the goalkeeper who is considered uh, one of the top players in the world right now. He's actually in the top three for player of the year, um, for the world player of the year. And um, it was Germany's goalkeeper. And so it was it was kind of a big deal and Donovan won the MVP and it was nice for him to get those accolades. It's all a, kind of a glorified friendly though, so you know that's not that important. Two days later, Donovan announces that he's retiring from soccer altogether. And you know, everything kind of blows up. Um, and all of a sudden, uh, Donovan just goes on a tear where he just is playing out of his head. He's scoring goals, he's having multiple assists. And coming into the season, like I said, he needed one goal to get the all-time MLS record for that. But he also needed, he would have needed 18 goals to beat the all-time assist record or to tie it. And he, uh, he'd never had more than 16 assists in his career in a season and he just went crazy and just was scoring goals and getting assists and he ended up with 10 goals and 19 assists so he broke the all-time record for both goals and assists in the same season um, and LA went on a run in the second half of the, and, and they were just stunning to watch they were fun they played well it was it was just it was just a, a great time for me to watch them. And I considered, you know, through all this, like if they got into the playoffs going to watch their game in LA, or actually when they had his final, Donovan's final game with the US men's national team going back east to, to see that. And I just decided not to do that. But um, they got into the playoffs and, um, and uh, early in the playoffs, Donovan had uh, his best game in the playoffs of his entire career. And so Donovan, Donovan holds basically all the records, all major records in U.S. soccer. And so in the playoffs, he has um, uh, 25 goals and I think 14 assists. And the next closest player on goals-wise has 16 goals, and he's tied for the most assists with 14. So, um, and he, early in the playoffs, he had a hat trick, scored three goals and had an assist, um, got another assist a little bit later. Um, uh, so there, there are five games in the playoffs. They played two games against one team, home and away, and then two games against another team. And it was tight, and like I said earlier, LA finally made it through and went to the championship, and so I just decided, gotta go see this. So um, it was really cool to watch Donovan, and in the end, when they won it, Donovan now is the only player in the history with six championships. Um, he's played in seven. Um, he's the only player to play in that many as well. Um, uh, that LA is the only team with five championships. Uh, next closest team has four. Uh, Bruce Arena, the coach of the Galaxy, has five championships with two different teams. Uh, Nick's closest coach only has two. So it was it was kind of a momentous, it's a big deal. It's like, a, it's a dynasty. LA has won uh, three of the last four MLS Cup championships um, and have been to like five, uh, four of the last six, I think. And they've won the Supporter Shield, the best record in the regular season twice over that period as well. So they, they've just been great. And, and like I said, they play beautiful soccer this year. They kind of evolved into a possession team. Um, it's fun to watch. Um, the other thing about the Galaxy was that um, they were just a, they're, they're a cool bunch of guys. And they're very, it's, it's a kind of like a big family, the, the, the team. And one of the things this year, they, uh, one of the things they talked about towards the end of the season, all the players, a bunch of the players' wives are having kids. Um, and a bunch of the staffs. And, um, and so apparently they, they have like 25 kids under the age of two 
um, for players and staff. Um, so you know, there it's it's kind of a, a fascinating dynamic. It's it's uh, unusual. Um, in addition, there was this big thing. Uh, one of my other favorite players for the Galaxy is a guy named AJ De La Garza, who's a defender, and he went to college at Maryland, and he played with a, with Omar Gonzalez, who you may have heard of, who plays for the U.S. Men's National Team, is a central defender. And Gonzalez is six five. He's this huge guy. He's typical central defender. Wins everything. AJ De La Garza is a little guy. He's like five eight. But he and Omar Gonzalez played together in college at Maryland, and I think they won two national championships there. They were both drafted by the Galaxy, and they played together their entire careers. And they've they've got like over 100 starts together in defense, um, and I think they've only lost one game or something. It's it's incredible. Um, so they tend to be really good together. AJ's wife was pregnant, and in the pregnancy, they discovered that his uh, his son. Uh, in utero had a heart defect and so it was this huge thing and and towards the end of the season his wife gave birth and his son only lived for a week and then died um, so and at the same time Omar Gonzalez his best friend and roommate from college um, his wife was pregnant and he now has a brand new baby that was born just a couple months at, or a couple weeks after AJ's um, there's and there's like four other players who have babies that were just born, and there's another one uh, uh, whose wife is pregnant and due next um, in the next couple weeks. So it's kind of cool that I mean, AJ at the game I was watching, you know, after they won, and AJ just like fell down on the field just crying. Um, and it's it's uh, I know Karu, you probably have a better appreciation for what he's going through, but even I mean what he went through losing a newborn is, I don't want to say easier, but um, uh, it's a very different experience than one you had um, losing Galen. So um, in addition to all that, the, LA, the, the left back for LA is a guy named Robbie Rogers, who they picked up last season, um, who had been playing in Europe, was a US player and was a winger, a left winger. and. Um, retired from soccer at the age of 25 because he was gay and he felt pressure um, uh, you know was having trouble dealing with it and he came he retired and came out as gay LA picked him up and um, have really been great about you know uh, you know just bringing him in and he's part of the team I mean as you kind of would expect but he's also talked about how in particular Landon Donovan really reached out to him and helped him out and so they converted him to left back and he's been one of the one of the kind of breakout players of the year. So, um, in addition, uh, there's a couple more things like uh, there. LA have two midfielders who are Brazilians, a guy named Marcelo Sarvas and Janinho, and they have just been stellar all year. And both of them also are having kids. Um, and uh, and they actually uh, Sarvas set up a, a special um, like support. Um, activities for AJ De La Garza when his child was before his child died, but but when they when he was diagnosed as having this heart condition. So you know, there's just a lot of really nice stories around this team. Um, so in the end, you know, we had a great trip, um, and I felt a real sense of closure going to this game and and getting to see uh, Donovan's last game. Um, in addition, you know, it's, it's interesting because I think MLS, I, I actually heard this on a podcast after I got home, but I, I think I had thought about it beforehand. MLS is really changing. Um, there, there's two new teams coming in next year, Orlando and New York City FC, and it's exciting. And uh, Orlando is bringing in Kaká to play for them. New York FC is playing, bringing in Frank Lampard and David Villa. Um, uh, big, huge international stars. Um, and they have huge budgets and the league is just it's really growing and you know I don't know if I've talked before I probably have about how the Seattle fans are, fans are just really annoying I mean they don't really know what's going on actually there was a lot of you know after the the, the Seattle was eliminated after winning that game 2-1 to one, a lot of their fans complained about the rules and it's like this is this is a standard international rule whether you like it or not and it's and a lot of them didn't actually know it. It was interesting because I was watching the game and the the fans are singing two one we're up blah 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 blah. You know, um, 
in the last 15 minutes of the game, and I don't know that they really realized that they were being eliminated from the playoffs. So it was it, those types of fans are becoming more ubiquitous, and it's one of these great things when you know you've been involved with something when it wasn't very popular, and as it becomes more popular, the success that you've always wanted for it changes it, and it's just the reality of it. Um, and I think that uh, uh, that's happening with MLS and, and with Donovan retiring. I mean, Donovan was just a very can he was he was unique in the sports world. He's a very candid guy. He's very honest. Um, you know, he tells people what he thinks. He's, he's done a whole bunch of talk about mental health recently, talking about how he's had suffered through depression and how um, teams need to recognize that and deal with that with players. And, uh, and that, uh, you know, and it's been great to have him come out like that, but it's, it really does feel like the end of an era. Um, Donovan won his first championship in 2001 with the San Jose Earthquakes. Um, and it was, um, you know, it was just a very different league there. I, in 2001, I actually watched the LA Galaxy win the U.S. Open Cup. I, we were living in LA, and I, I went to the game, and it was a, a college stadium someplace, and it was, you know, a, a third full maybe, and um, and it was just a tiny crowd. And we like went down to the side of the field after the game, and the players came around with the trophy, and you know, it, it felt sort of like. Uh, people trying to make a professional sports venue where there wasn't really one, um, and now it's not like that. Uh, it's it's a very highly polished product. Um, you know, I, I, in the video you'll see lots of fireworks and stuff, which I you know I don't like the spectacle particularly. I like the soccer, um, but it's it's exciting to kind of have been there for this, and it feels like I said it feels like a real a real sea change. So anyway, that's a long video. Um, I will have cut in um, footage of, of random things that we did over the over the course of the the trip. Hope you guys are doing great. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it.